Well, a welcome to everyone, to everyone on Zoom and phone who's joining us in this commemoration service for the life of HRH Prince Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh. We have a very small group of invited men, people here. They are our chair and vice chair of the parish council, our district councillors and our church wardens. And they are representing the many. They're representing civic and church life as we come together to give thanks for the life of a truly remarkable person who we have known all our lives and whose passing will clearly leave a home oh, will never be put. And so we come to give thanks to God for his life and his service. So let, let's now come to God. In the name of Christ, who died and was raised for the glory of God the Father, grace, mercy, and peace be with you. So we meet this day to remember before God, His Royal Highness Philip, Duke of Edinburgh, to renew our trust and confidence in Christ, and to pray that together we may be one in Him, through whom we offer our prayers and praises to the Father. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Blessed are you, Lord our God, lover of souls. You uphold us in life and sustain us in death. To you be glory and praise forever. For the darkness of this age is passing away as Christ, the bright and morning star, brings to his saints the light of life. As you give light to those in darkness who walk in the shadow of death, so remember in your kingdom your faithful servant, Philip, Duke of Edinburgh. The death may be for him the gate to life and to unending fellowship with you, where with your saints you live and reign, one in the perfect union of love, now and forever. Amen. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. And so now we have our readings. The 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they come. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. A reading from Paul to the people of Corinth. So it is with the resurrection of the dead. What is sown is perishable. What is raised is imperishable. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a physical body. It is raised a spiritual body. If there is a physical body, there is also a spiritual body. Thus it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam became a life-giving spirit. But it is not the spiritual that is first, but the physical 
and then the spiritual. The first man was from the earth, a man of dust. The second man is from heaven. As was the man of dust, so are also those who are of the dust. And as is the man of heaven, so are those who are of heaven. Just as we have borne the image of the man of dust, we will also bear the image of the man of heaven. What I'm saying, brothers and sisters, is this. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Listen, I will tell you a mystery. <clears throat> we will not all die, but we will be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable and we will be changed. For this perishable body must put on imperishability, and this mortal body must put on immortality. When this perishable body puts on imperishability, and this mortal body puts on immortality, then the saying that is written will be fulfilled. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh, death, is your victory? Where, O oh, death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved, be steadfast, immovable, always excelling in the work of the Lord, because you know that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. Thanks be to God. May the words of my lips and the thoughts of all our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. At the Queen's coronation, Philip, Duke of Edinburgh, promised to become a liege man of faith and trust. What wonderful words. Liege man of faith and trust and truth. And that promise shaped the life and work of the Duke of Edinburgh. It was a promise he kept so very well because he was, after all, a man of his word. And the images of Prince Philip keeping that coronation promise are familiar to us all. There's so many of them, pictures taken in a long life of duty and service. Beside Her Majesty at great moments of state, nearby in so many in such various different settings. He used to offer advice to others, which we would be well to listen to. Talk about everything else, but don't talk about yourself. It's widely been observed that he himself did not like being praised. He had great gifts, and we've been hearing so much in the media about some of those gifts and people's experiences of them. He was resilient in youth. He was a very distinguished naval, had very distinguished naval service and quickly proved his ability to lead. We know, of course, about the love of his family. We know of his commitment to conservation at a time when it wasn't the popular thing. And, and we also know of the time he gave to very, very many charities. And in particular, we marvel at the success of the Duke of Edinburgh Award he created in 1956. And in fact, we have a young member of our congregation who was doing their voluntary service as part of their award here in the church. He was a man who thought deeply about human character and human purpose. We also know about his sharp mind and keen wit and sometimes acerbic comments. Often it seems said to provoke a response rather than to hurt. He once famously said to the Bishop of Plymouth, as Nick was about to stand up and give the grace at the formal dinner, a proper one, please, not one of those made up ones. Apparently he would dissect sermons over dinner. 
the answer as people in daunting. And the min minister at Canongate Kirk in Edinburgh remembers that the Duke would sit in the royal pew with his arms crossed and his eyes fixed on the pulpit, listening intently to what was being said and considering it very carefully. I always wondered whether I might be interrogated afterwards. And the minister added, he was undoubtedly a man of faith, but it was by no means an unquestioning one. Prince Philip was a man of faith and understood that faith is not an airy commitment to doctrine or a set of rules, but a way of life, a calling to live and die in the hope of the Easter message of the risen Christ. It's in some way fitting that we celebrate his life and acknowledge his death at Easter. A man who epitomized self-sacrifice and service, and who in so doing points us to Christ, who paid the ultimate sacrifice. Because at the Easter, life is not lost, it endures. Witness, service, hope are not defeated. They are victorious. At Easter, faith turns into glory. One of the favorite hymns of Her Majesty, I'm told, is The Lord's My Shepherd, Psalm 23. We've just heard it read today. It promises that even when we walk through death's dark vein, God is with us. His goodness and mercy follow us all our life. Prince Philip has died during the Easter season, the time of year when we remember that Jesus, the Good Shepherd, fulfilled his promise to lay down his life for his sheep. Prince Philip died in the faith of Jesus Christ who went before him and who goes before each of us to prepare the way through the darkness of death into the light of God's presence. And so as we remember again, give thanks for Prince Philip's remarkable life, we wish that he may have fair winds and a following sea, and that he may rest in peace and rise in glory. And so now let's come to God in prayer. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Merciful Father and Lord of all life, we praise to you that we are made in your image and reflect your truth and light. We thank you for the life of his Royal Highness Philip. Duke of Edinburgh, for the love he received from you and showed among us. Above all, we rejoice at your gracious promise to all your servants, living and departed, that we shall rise again at the coming of Christ. And we ask that in due time, we may share with your servant Philip that clearer vision, promised to us in the same Christ our Lord, Amen. Almighty God, Father of all mercies and giver of all comfort, deal graciously with pray with all who mourn. Particularly we think this morning of the members of the royal family, of those who were privileged to call Prince Philip their friend. We also think about this nation and all the nations of the Commonwealth who will be marking his passing that casting all our care on you, we may know the consolation of your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Bring us, O Lord God, at our last awakening, into the house and gate of heaven, to enter into that gate and dwell in that house, where there shall be no darkness nor dazzling, but one equal light. No noise, nor silence, 
but one equal music. No fears nor hopes, but one equal possession. No ends or beginnings, but one equal eternity. In the habitations of thy glory and dominion, world without end. Amen. And now we come to God, God as we join together in the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And so I now commend Prince Philip into God's love and care. Into your hands, O Father and Lord, we commend your servant, Philip, Duke of Edinburgh. Enlighten him with your holy grace, and suffer him never to be separated from you, O Lord and Trinity, God everlasting. Amen. Grant, Lord, that we may live in your fear, die in your favour, rest in your peace, rise in your power, and reign in your glory. For your own beloved Son's sake, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Um, I said to the man who stood at the gate of the year, give me a light that I may tread safely unto the unknown. And he replied, go out into the darkness and put your hand into the hand of God. That shall be to you better than light and safer than a known one. And so may God in his infinite love and mercy bring the whole church, living and departed, to a joyful resurrection and the fulfillment of his eternal kingdom and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and all whom you love this day and forevermore. Amen. And so now I've been like to invite everyone who is able to stand and it, those on zoom and telephone please do sing for us this is your chance to minister to us as we join with you although unable to sing uh, and uh, hear richard play the national anthem <laughs> 